Saved the Valkyries. Sigrun, how did this happen? Mimir, is that you? You have been freed, but... Freedom comes at a price, milady. You speak truly. Countless winters we serve the Allfather. But only through his union to the Queen did we ever taste some measure of freedom. But aren't you the Queen? There has only been one Queen of the Valkyries, the Goddess Freya. When Odin severed her wings, I served in her absence, but it wasn't enough for the Allfather. He used an archaic piece of magic, corrupting my sisters. I tried to contain the damage by imprisoning them in places where they could cause no harm, but soon I lost myself as well. Sigrun, I'm sorry for being so worthless. I could have done something, or tried at the very least. What will you do now? I must reunite with my sisters. Together, we can restore balance to the realms. You have the eternal blessings of the Valkyries. Well, we 
we did it, I suppose. You don't sound very happy about it. It's difficult to be happy about anything when you're a reanimated head. I'm grateful we were able to set the Valkyries free. But so much of this could have been avoided, only... You said it yourself, Head. It does not matter anymore. The past is the past. Well, that's awfully cheerful coming from you. I am in a good mood. The dwarves will make use of this helm. Your dad's a wee bit single-minded, isn't he, lad? Definitely. Freya is the Valkyrie Queen? She never told us. You never told us. Explain yourself, Head. Or are you bewitched again? Not at all. Freya was Queen of the Valkyries at one point. Part of her marriage dowry included overseeing the Valkyries themselves. As a powerful Vanir goddess, they revered her. I never knew how much until now. If I'm not mistaken, we've yet to discuss the tale of the giant Bergelmir. Oh yeah. I remember his shrine. It looked happier than the other ones. Mostly. It begins in an ocean of blood. Finally, a story worth hearing. If you remember, Ymir, the first giant, was fatally stabbed by Odin. It's in his blood our story starts. Ymir's magical guts poured out in a torrent so violent it threatened to flood all of creation. The Jotnar were unprepared, as the very last of them were washed away in the endless tide. Not just Ymir, but all of giant kind faced extinction. And so would Odin's victory have been complete. But Ymir's kind did not all perish that day. Staying afloat in the hollowed husk of a tree, the frost giant Bergelmir endured as did his lady wife. For weeks they sailed, until finally they came upon a new land. They called it Jotunheim. And there they would start anew. As father and mother, they would multiply exceedingly, and as king and queen, they worked to make Jotunheim a land where giants would know no master but themselves. Bergelmir never sought revenge for Odin's slaughter. His vengeance was to live and prosper. He died at peace, a legion of his kin to mourn him. He would ever be known as Bergelmir the Beloved. Bergelmir the Beloved. Huh. I've never heard a story end that way. Not a true one, anyway. If you do, laddie. Brothers, there's another thing I must let you know. From the time you were away in Jotunheim. Well... Tell us then. It concerns Freya. She paid me a visit. What did you tell her? What little I know about where Odin may have kept her Valkyrie wings. Seems she's rather bent on reclaiming her warrior spirit. I'm afraid the cycle of vengeance may not be so easily broken. <gasps> wow. Know any more stories, Mimir? Of course, laddie, and yours for the asking. But I prefer the boat. In here is... distracting.
Mimir, is there a story for the giant with the flaming sword? Shoot up the brave. Of course. We've spoken so much of frost giants. It's about time we instead met the most fiery giant of all. Back when Ymir first emerged from Ginungagop, it was Suart who followed next. He came from Muspelheim, the Fire Realm, bringing heat to the young cosmos, conjuring the sun from his primordial flame. But let's come back to that flaming sword, shall we? Suart the Brave forged his sword of flame for one purpose alone. To burn down Asgard when Ragnarok comes at last. His destiny is to fall at the hands of Thor and Odin, but in so doing, strike the blow that leaves their realm in ash and ruin. And from that destruction, the world can be born anew. Until then, alone he waits in Muspelheim, never sleeping, ever honing his fiery blade. Ray, generous suit, who knows he lives but to his doom. All because he chooses to serve a grand cycle so much bigger than himself. To truly embrace your purpose and the patience and sacrifice it demands is to ensure your day will come. You think we'll be there when that day comes? I've seen enough of war between the gods, but you, little brother, who can say? Okay. What about the giant with eight arms? Starkath the Mighty, he was called. If the giants ever had anything so organized as an army, Starkath would have been their general. An opinion, in retrospect, I should have kept to myself. But no, as Odin's advisor, I kept him advised. And having bent his will towards Starkath's doom, there was no dissuading him. But even Thor wasn't stupid enough to take on Starkath on his own. No. Instead, the Aesir set forth slanders upon Starkath's name, branding him throughout the realms as a monster to be feared. They said he abducted an elf queen who killed herself rather than be ravished by the giant. Lies, of course, but you're too young for her story. In the end, even the Vanir gods and the armies of Midgard were roused to the cause. They surrounded Starkath. Showered him with arrows until he was brought to his knees. He surrendered, hoping by trial he could clear his name. Thor took advantage and ripped off one of Starkath's arms, which only made it easier to sever another and another until he was satisfied. Relieved of six arms and too much blood, Starkath perished upon the battlefield. Ah, I regret it to this day, you know. I told myself there was nothing I could do, but I wish I'd tried. <laughs>